The incumbent congressman in Florida's newly drawn 28th congressional district, that is South Day down to Key West, is of course Republican Carlos Jimenez, first elected two years ago. In fact, the congressman was with us last week talking about the Keys cleaning out and clearing up from Hurricane Ian. His opponent, Democrat Robert Asensio, was in the Keys as well. Asensio is a former state rep and a Miami-Dade school police captain, former, and he is right there with us today. Robert, great to see you. Robert, we're glad morning. you're with us. How are you? Good morning. So always great to be here with you guys, and thank you for this great opportunity to speak to South people in South Florida. All right, if we can, let me begin with a question. Your principal criticism of Carlos Jimenez is that on January 6, 2021, he voted not to certify the electors and the election results in the presidential races in Pennsylvania and Arizona. He said that they had, you know, not followed the constitutional process in the way that they had uh, accumulated, tallied the votes. Did they do that? And, and what is your problem with the way he voted? Certainly. So let's look at why he voted. He voted because he says that there was some irregularities to date. There is no evidence, not an iota of evidence, that the will of the voters was circumvented. So he's actually voted against the, one of the most precious rights that we have in our society, in the United States, it's the right to vote. Um, and then if he had thought that there was something wrong, and this is, comes to the why I'm running against him, if he thought that there's something wrong with that type of legislation, or I'm sorry, that t those acts, then what legislation did he propose to change and address the big lie? Because as of date, there is, has no evidence been proven or provided to show that there's any irregularities with the votes of Pennsylvania or Arizona or any other state for that matter in the United States. You know, as it happens, um, Facebook reminded me that five years ago on this very weekend, you were here at the table pre-COVID mm -hmm. when we had people with us in, in the studio as a state rep. Um, and so you, as a, a new um, entrant into the congressional race, you, you do have a voting record to stand on in the state, in the state legislature. Mm -hmm. Um, but on a national level, uh, you just heard we had a, a Republican candidate in another district right before you. You may or may not have been able to hear, but I had asked him about votes, what, what he might have voted on all the spending bills, on the uh, Infrastructure Act, on the COVID Relief Act, on the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, party line votes, we're going to pretty much assume you would have voted yes. But then you hear the criticism about inflation and gas prices, clearly what Republicans are running on, and an Achilles heel for the Biden administration, frankly, in campaigning right now. How, how do you address that? Well, I got to tell you, we have to first cut through the partisan obstructionism. We have to cut through the mis and disinformation, really deal with the facts. Look, I'm running because too many people in South Florida in our district, too many Americans across the country are suffering to stand by and allow this partisan divide to continue. I'm a moderate. I go right down the middle. I deal with people and I put people's issues first. And to see that our congressman or the congressman that was just on to say that he would example advise the former president not to adhere to the subpoena the will of the subpoena that's actually disparaging the system when we saw the january 6th um insurrection in the capitol we saw the vote to not certify the president's election that makes us not just weak across the world the global stage but it makes us weak at home it continues to divide we need to address the issues now to your point what do we need to do I would have voted yes, I would have voted not because it's partisan uh, alliance, but it's because it was a good thing to do for the American people. We need to reduce the taxes on the gas, lower the, the prices of the gasoline. We saw once the American Rescue Plan was passed and, and, and the Biden administration suspended the uh, gas tax, we saw a decrease in taxation, I mean, decrease of pricing. The problem we have is that we just went through a global pandemic, a global pandemic. The last one we had was roughly over 100 years ago. Most countries across the world have experienced an economic downturn. The United States, our current economic problems have not just started with the Biden administration. They can be dated back to years before, even into the prior administration, where we had the greatest increase of the national debt. So if we want to re reduce um, the budget deficit, if you will, and we want to add to the budget. Well, you know, like there are many ways of doing that. Let's talk about the science and chips program that is designed, that was just passed as part of the Inflation Reduction Act that Carlos Jimenez voted against. That's designed to bring manufacturing jobs back to the country. That's Those are high wage jobs. 
Our con current congressman has done very little to nothing, nothing to provide constituent services when it comes to providing advice or fighting for job creation. He's done nothing to very little to be able to provide resolution to our growing need of resilience. We just dodged. We just Robert, dodged. Let me let me let me jump in here. We, we don't. Sir. We. We don't really want a monologue. We want a conversation. Uh, let me Absolutely. ask you a, a foreign policy question regarding something that near and dear to people in Florida, near and dear to you, even though I believe that your ancestry is Puerto Rican. But, you know, a lot of Cubans who live here uh, were kind of outraged that the Cuban government wanted help from the United States to recover from Hurricane Ian. Now, Congressman Jimenez was pretty strong when we spoke with them saying, no, we shouldn't give it to them because it's gonna wind up in the pockets of the Cuban regime, Diaz-Canel and his group. Uh, what, what is your view on that? Man, my heart breaks for anybody that's suffered because of that storm and much less in a, in a regime like they have in Cuba, a failed regime that has oppressed its people. You know, I'm for humanitarian aid, but we have to open dialogue and we have to make sure that we call and anything we do for the to help the Cuban island is contingent on that regime um, reducing its dracon draconian draconian uh, uh, a, a suppression of the people. We see in the last week in Cuba what the new information is coming out. People are protesting. They're trying to, you know, they don't have power. They don't have water. They have very little food. They have very little medical supplies. You know, that's so close to our hemisphere. And, and it probably is adding, actually, it's not probably, it is adding to those that are seeking to come into our country. I think we have the, one of the largest rates of uh, apprehension of those that are coming unauthorized into the country from Cuba. We have to make sure that we, you know, thread the needle. We have to create dialogue and we have to help. Um, one of the growing, most quickest growing humanitarian crises in our hemisphere. Yeah. And Robert, you're touching on a yeah. little bit of yeah. an immigration issue that we yeah. will dis probably discuss mm -hmm. at some further point. But as you know, TV time goes like that. And so we need to say thank you and goodbye and um, uh, carry on with your candidacy. And Robert, we will see you on the other side. Thanks very much. Ask everyone to vote for Robert Asensio, AsensioForCongress.com. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Thank you.